There's something about that heat and that, that dangerous thing that you can't touch, but yet you can kind of touch it with these tools. And I joke that it's suffering for one's art because it really, I mean, it, it's hot. I'm always just trying to look to do something different, I hope, something I haven't seen before. A non-glass blower might not really know why that's unique, but a glass blower might look at it and go, God, how in the hell did you get that? I've had this studio for nine years. When I finished college, I was unsure of what I was gonna do with my liberal arts degree. I wasn't an artist at all. I didn't have any real formal training. I took no art in college. I took this glass workshop up in Wisconsin. You know, I was okay at the basics and I was kind of intrigued. And uh, this guy and his wife, his name is Jim Engerbretson. He said, well, why don't you come down to River Falls and enroll as a special student? That's how it started. The struggle for me was finding confidence in this kind of artistic voice, which I'd never, I, I don't have a, you know, of artistic voice. I didn't, that was something totally foreign to me. And, and so gaining the confidence to say, okay, I want to make this, took some time. The cane pieces, I made first in my studio here because I didn't have any color. And so it's not that complex an idea. It's really a pretty simple idea to just drop these things in there. The assumption is that they might just all glob together and become a ball and, you know, this ugly mass in the middle. But with a little bit of finesse, you can get them to create something pretty interesting to look at. There's something really appealing to me about making something interesting out of clear glass. Stop. I think also as a Minnesotan, you know, as an icy, crystalline kind of thing, it really appeals. are going to make a piece lined with copper and silver foil. Putting the copper and the silver on, there should be some golds. The copper and the blue will, with the silver, should create some green. First, we're going to stick the copper in it. Now you start to understand why maybe you don't see other people do this. It's like, why, what are you, what are you doing? And why? Sticking your hand in is kind of off the wall. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. You're going to stick your hand in there? But I really like the idea. This has developed into a bit of a refined dance. I'm going to blow off my hand. It gets hot. But as long as you have these gloves and you can use some air, it's, it's, uh, it's OK. <laughs> this is really hot until it's all lined. And then I can keep my hand in there a little bit longer. The metals are going right against the colored layer in the vessel, and adding that extra bit of mineral to the color and the extra heat, it just causes them to create a whole other palette. It's a little bit like pottery or salt firing in that you put these things together and you kind of know what's going to happen, but there's still some room for serendipity. If the glass and I are on different wavelengths, it can be a struggle. And so when you make a nice piece, it's like, ah, oh, that, that's cool looking, you know? And I really like that. Um, there's still that kind of surprise that I'm able to make something, you know, like that. And when it's, I think, elegant and clean, and that's exciting to me.
Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.